look familiar? Algebra. We've done it or we're going to do it. But I bet we forget to ask the history of algebra. We live in Silicon Valley, surrounded by innovation. However, we really don't think about where did it come from? Who started it? What's behind it? So today, let's find out what's in common between innovation, inspiration, and Islamic science. Silicon Valley's Tech Museum with Roque Montez. You know, Roque, I understand the Tech Museum has specifically chosen this exhibit. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Absolutely. The Tech Museum's mission is to inspire, provoke thought, educate, and inform. And we think that Islamic Science Rediscovered does all, if not more, of this. So why was this particular exhibit chosen? Was there particular parts of it? Or what was the objective behind it? It's really about information. It's really about empowerment. It's really about education. As you know, in fact, at the beginning of the program, you asked a very poignant question. What about the history of algebra? Did you know where it comes from? Well, I would argue that many, many people just don't. I don't remember asking that question to myself either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, it has its origins in the Islamic world, as do so many of the other great and compelling inventions and discoveries that we now take for granted. I actually walked in the exhibit and that's exactly what I thought of. I saw almost every subject covered, not just math, knowledge, so much more. Far beyond math, engineering, optics, flight, you name it. It has its origins in the very, unfortunately, forgotten part, but very important part of our history. History that, frankly, I didn't know very much about until experiencing this exhibition. I guess that's also true because we're so used to being focused in our history, our own local region. I, it's not about being self-centered. I think it's that we just become more self-centric and we forget really that there's a bigger place, a bigger world, and things have come from multiple places. I, I heard something about a camera. There's something very special, special about that. Could you give me a little bit more about this? Absolutely. The camera actually has its name from the Arabic word, kamara. Oh. In addition to that, again, I think you hit on a very important point. We are very narrow in our thinking. This exhibition hopes to do damage to that narrowness and open up in a very big way the fact that the very important creations, discoveries, and uh, compelling things that you and I take for granted today all are the result of very collaborative minds from around the world. So what was your favorite part of the exhibit? had to be medicine. I wanted to be a pediatrician when I was younger, uh, took a few detours, wound up in journalism, and now here at the Tech Museum. I still think I landed pretty well, but I actually was very much interested in, in medicine. So what particularly about this exhibit shares some things that most people don't even know about? Well, did you know that the first modern hospital was built in Baghdad a thousand years ago? No, I did not know this. <laughs> I bet you didn't. <laughs> I think I heard the similar thing about flight. That's correct. So again, as an, I, I've been educated in American schools, yes. <laughs> and I've been told that the Wright brothers in North Carolina took flight, um, the very first to take flight. In fact, the license plate for North Carolina is first in flight. But the reality is that uh, more than a thousand years ago, uh, again, uh, an Islamic scientist took flight over the hills of Spain. It's, it's funny how we have a tendency to forget other parts of the world or just be so content with what we know. And in the same way, you know, I think of Columbus sailing the ocean blue when really there have been many predecessors. And I think it, at, at the exhibit, I also noticed that their travels have been far and beyond, I think 75,000 miles. And I did not know this. And I, I guess the question really comes to, is it who writes the history or is it the truth of history that we have to discover on our own. Well, that's a very good point because I think you said that we have a tendency to forget. I think, more accurately, it's a tendency to neglect. Okay. And as a result, these discoveries, very important discoveries that we can talk about, learn here in this ex exhibition, are very important to our growth, 
our, our, our broadening of our knowledge, and I think it's incumbent upon us as an institution and certainly individually to share what we know. Which is What age groups is this for? Is this for everyone or children? This is absolutely for everyone. When you begin school, you learn history very quickly, as yeah, you yeah. just recited. Uh, in 1492, Columbus <laughs> sailed the, the ocean, ocean blue, blue <laughs> right? Uh, so I would say that we absolutely need to introduce everybody to this very hidden and or neglected uh, knowledge. So if, what any particular age group, because I think that you also have some exhibits that are hands-on for children as well as adults. Yes, the interactives, we've got more than 40 interactives here. And again, you, they're, they're uh, a, a, at a height where uh, a student who's 6, 5, 4, 8, 25 can touch the screen and learn just so much. Uh, in, the, in the course of three to five minutes. So what's the, what's the time frame that this exhibit covers? Uh, it covers from the 8th to the 16th century. Excellent. And how long is the exhibit around? Do we have a few months? How quickly do we need to get here and get in the line? I think we need to get here immediately, the moment it opened. And, and, and from every day since then, we should, we should be here. Uh, the reality is that um, it will be here at least through the holidays. So again, I, I say come fast, come soon, come often. Absolutely. So having said that, I think you have to come truly visit the Tech Museum for yourself. Find out the truths about innovation in Silicon Valley and around the world.